Mizuno 921s, 921s, JPX irons. I've got all four here, down from a grain flow forge up to the hot metal with stops between. Let's talk about these clubs and see what they might do for your golf. Got a competition with today's video. Do you want to win a brand new Mizuno driver? We will send it anywhere in the world. To win this driver, you need to be subscribed to this channel. So hit the subscribe button down there. We need to get this video to 5,000 likes. If it gets to 5,000 likes, one of you subscribers will win a brand new Mizuno driver. Also, in the comment section down below, chance to win, one of the winners will pick from a subscriber of this channel who has posted a comment as well as hitting the thumbs up button. And in the comment, I just want you to tell me if you've gamed Mizuno irons or not. So you can just write, I've gamed Mizuno irons, I haven't gamed Mizuno irons, or even tell me which ones you really loved. If you do all that, you could win a brand new Mizuno driver. So I've got the Tor which we're going to talk about tech in a second. So I've got the tall one, which is like the most MP-like of their range, if you like. Then we go up to the forged. So JPX 921 forged, which blends on its looks very much with the tall. Then we do jump up a little bit in shape and we start going to the Hot Metal Pro. That's quite an interesting one. Less offset, uh, look, well, looking down at it, less offset than the JPX 921 in the Hot Metal, which is now we're up at our chunkiest kind of most help in theory. We're gonna start at the top end, so the chunky one, work our way down, collect some numbers, see what these are all about. These are six irons. So when I look here first at the, the hot metal, I mean, it is, it's quite a long face, medium the thick top line, but they shave the top off. So it does look not crazy big, and you do get a bit of an offset in there, which is obviously all there to try and help people who need as much help as possible. As game improvement irons go, I always think Mizuno do quite well at making them look decent. And I think something to think about is that the reason they're gonna try and concentrate on looks with a club like this is with the way their sets have been set up for a few years now, and my bag is very much this way, you could very easily go from a tour to the hot metal in one set and you could play them. You know, there, there's blending options galore in these four sets. So we've got chrome alloy in three of them, and then we've got um, grain flow forged in the tour. So we are crossing over on materials as well. So we'll see what that sounds and feels like. Now, I mean, this does just feel nice. It, it doesn't sound crazy explosive. That's the first decent hit I've hit there. Um, it doesn't sound crazy explosive. Bear in mind the hot metal is a hot metal club. You know, it's meant to be the power one. It feels relatively calm and kind of nice in its sound. It does feel good. It feels really good. Um, often, and we'll look at the tech, like I say, in a second, they're very kind of quite weighted towards the toe. Mizuno have done that for quite a long time, um, kind of putting more weight out in the toe because I think lots, I mean, my testing with amateurs definitely over years, you get a few that jam it in the heel, but lots would be missing middle to toe more than in the heel side. I quite like the way they pack the toe on these kind of more friendly ones. I ripped that one, and it did sound, you know, it sounds louder than an MP probably, but it's not offensive. So Hot Metal Pro next. So these two are really, really quite blendy in everything they do. You know, it's the same club, but the Pro, we definitely see less offset going on. So more of a kink here than on this one. And it looks very good. Like again, this is now game improvement ideas. It's the same, everything's very similar. It's, it's chrome alloy to the Hot Metal but we're losing all that offset because we're now starting to move transition, trying to get closer to that tour in looks because you wanted to, and this is a big problem with blending, or not a big problem, but it is still a problem. If you want to go like I do, really chunky, say 654 iron around that area, but you want bladed or really classic looks in the short, they're gonna have no offset. And then you do have to start accepting big amounts of offset. And you gotta test it because that offset sometimes is there to actually help you with all your numbers. But if it's a visual thing you don't like the look of, in theory, this one now gives you all the benefits of a hot metal, but it's blending in its um, look of offsets, which will kind of connect it more to that bottom end or that uh, stronger end of their, their brand, you know, the kind of players clubs. So let's hit some with the pro. Uh, before I do, why don't we take a look at the tech of all four of these clubs to see exactly what they are doing according to Mizuno. So let's look at the tech. And I've actually got some notes here because there's uh, quite a lot of irons to talk about, isn't there? 
so if we start with the Tor, the Tor is Grain Flow Forged HD, where you've got Grain Flow Forged Chrome Alloy in the Forged, where in the we're in the Hot Metal Pro and the Hot Metal, your Chrome Alloy, and it's their fourth generation of Chrome Alloy is what they're saying. We've got the re-engineered Core Tech face. Uh, two miller, point two millimeters thinner across the center point on the hot metals, which is this kind of, you see it almost on the back, this bar that's taken out there. And we're trying to make that nice and thin, trying to help with ball speeds across the face. Both of the hot metals have the seamless cup face design. So again, removing weight from the outside. They also both feature the harmonic impact for really nice sounds and feels. I presume are then trying to blend them down with the forged ones on those feels as well. Because if you are going to gap these, you don't want a massive jux in feel and sound as you hit these compared to say the grain flow forged tour model brush pearl finish on these two so you get that uh, kind of just slightly off chrome finish so you don't get the glare if it's a sunny day and the exterior perimeter weighting mizuno are calling it stability frame with a toe bias weighting system again they're trying to help ball speeds across the face on offset hit, something I'd advise you to go and test. So the Tor model also has Chrome Alloy 4120, allowing for 0.5 of a millimeter, they're saying thinner across the face. Faster peak average ball speeds uh, from full body forged iron is what Mizuno state. CNC back milled as well, 6.4% wider milled slot increases stability on off center hits is what they're claiming in the forged JPX921. Also got the um, stability frame. So you can see how this one is really blending with those two game improvement ones as well. The forged is definitely sitting quite close to the two hot metals. Also got the pearl brass finish. So anti-glare distraction over the ball. Again, that is a good looking iron. And then the tech in the tour, we've got grain flow forged HD. So the legendary forging of Mizuno applied to this iron. Slightly toe bias, stability framed as well. Less, but it's there. They're playing with the soles on the short irons. They're really kind of tour refining the short irons as well, because when the players who want this kind of club game them, they do want specific looks maybe in those short irons as well. Again, blending, I think, and much more with the MP and stepping away from the hot metal range. Got the harmonic impact as well. That's where Mizuno are using vibration patterns to give you the best feeling iron they possibly can. And also got that pearl brush finish. So plenty of tech, plenty of things in there to try and help you and refinements as well. Um, let's go back out and see how they're getting on in the test. Hit that one nice. Again, feelings very similar. Oh, you haven't. That class, that's on the line. It's on the line, is it not? It's literally like the offset has just been removed. Now in theory, it's quite funny. Look at my tail of shots. This one now with less offset, in theory, should tail more with the world of offset. But I think you might find something slightly different on this set of shots. Really liking the look of this. Again, nice straight shot. Sound is good, feel is good. I honestly don't think there's gonna be much feel difference in this to a grain flow forge. Possibly the audio might change, but it's, it's minuscule for something that's game improvement bracket. It feels and sounds as good as anything. Again, you can see I'm hitting this one straighter than the more offset. And it's not particularly that I prefer either or, I like both. It's just that I'm like my eighth and ninth shot in and I'm starting to feel what I want to do. Like it's so easy to override the tiny differences that make. So, you know, test and if the offset you think really helps you use it, but if you hate it and don't like the look of it and someone's trying to say something, oh, this one might go more to the right. Again, you'd have to test it. I think you can override it very easily. Right, let's take a look at the numbers of the hot metals before we move on down towards the tour end. So Mark asked me to look at the numbers for him. We're doing the JPX uh, HM and HM Pro to start with. HM Pro, efficiency is a bit higher, so striking them a little bit better. It's club head speed exactly the same. Dynamic loft is a little bit different. 22 for the Pro and 23.5 for the hot metal 
which you'd think there would be the opposite way round, but if you look at strike up here, slightly lower on the face with the Pro, which might have an effect on that loft slightly. Now, if we head into the ball data, slightly quicker ball speed with the HM Pro, again, striking that slightly better. Launch angle's pretty much identical, around 200 revs difference in the spin. Again, all of this probably to do with Mark's deliveries, and then that results in a 184 carry with the hot metal and 189 carry with the hot metal pros. So let's move to the forge. Now we do see a difference when it gets to the forge, this line starts getting much straighter. So the top line of the club where it joins on the neck looks so much more towards the tall and kind of the MP range. You see how much straighter it is in this part, which makes the whole top line look straighter rather than this kind of almost looks curved the top of the kind of more game improvement one. So preferring the look of these, but I imagine we might start seeing a slight change in the numbers. Slightly longer blade length in JPX always, which might put some people off or not. Um, I don't mind it. I, I would prefer the MP range, I think, on looks for the length of blade appearance, um, but still very good looking. And again, next to no offset. So we're really blending with the Pro. Again, feels good. This is still chrome alloy, um, and that felt not really any different to the hot metal range, in my opinion. It felt and sounded very similar, which, to be honest with you, I liked, because I like the sound and feel of them. Not sure I'm feeling much difference. Did hit that slightly out the bottom, but it's still done very well for out the bottom. What I do like with this club is it's a really good blend between what you want, you know, for a better player looking club, for people who want something that looks really good, while at the time, still at the same time offering some help maybe in launches, those kind of ideas with its weighting. This end looks pretty classic, slightly longer, but good. And then this end, it does look like, and you've got the tech that we talked about earlier, like it's trying to help you in some ways. felt really nice and again this has next to no offset and the leak is definitely no more I feel like might be different lofts delivered on this one and slightly rolling back the distance which we'll talk about the blending options of all of these if that is the case and finally the tour this one made very very popular lots of people using this on the older version of this and Brooks Kepka winning his majors I think with this club post comments down below um, how many did he win using actually the tall, obviously the older one? Well, this is just beautiful. It is now, is it slightly less blade length? Because it looks not as long. And it's always interesting because it's probably, yeah, it's a fraction not as long in the blade length. Like a fraction. But noticeable down here. I'm now seeing MP, so Mizuno MP range. I'm seeing lovely straight top lines on the top, very the kind of thin, um, thin soles, beautiful classic looks with a little bit of help at the back. I do like the colorways of all these irons, this kind of brushed finish for glare, so they're not so chromed up. And this one now is the grain flow forge. So we're now again, really touching on the MP range. I can really see why Lots of good players and often the non-contracted players, which is the most interesting one, choosing an iron like this. So instantly the height of that, is it even the same club? Wowzers. I hit that wow. You can even see it from the stream. That just instantly went low. I might have hit that higher on the face. No, not really. And you can see from the stream, it's just na instantly higher. Obviously moving into grain flow forged, maybe a slight difference. Mm. Yeah, again, the height's different. The lofts will be different. I actually haven't got the lofts at the minute, but we'll tell you what dynamic loft I'm delivering. So you'll be able to see how the lofts change. One of the big things when I get clubs pre-launch, so we get them before we're, they're out and on websites and stuff like that, they never send the lofts. I think it's so interesting because often it's the marketing division that send the club. <sighs> Maybe the knowledge of what's doing what isn't there, I don't know. But instantly I can see very, 
like the numbers are looking and feeling truer. Another little point, so I've got different shafts in each one of these, so if you want to think about the shafts and how that's changing the numbers, obviously do your tests and see what comes out for you. Anyone who's watched me long enough seems will realise I'm pretty neutral, certainly on a steel six iron shaft with my delivery. But this grip, this corded grip, which is thinner than this Golf Pride half corded grip that's on the other ones, instantly the thinner grip, I don't know if this is intentional or not, that makes me feel like more like an MP. MPs always come with naturally thinner grips. I've got small hands, I quite like it. That instantly changes the feel of the club. I reckon that changes it more. And maybe we could do a test, post comments, if you want me to do a test on this with some kind of um, neutral golfers. Um, it changes the feeling of the club more than I reckon any of their fancy terms, to be honest. Just the thickness and feel of the grip. Also as well, which is interesting, this is a plus four grip I've just noticed. So it's actually pretty much the same all the way down where this has that tapered feel, which again, I just prefer. This would strongly compete with any MP club. If you wanted Mizunos, this would strongly compete with them. It just looks beautiful. Right, we'll do one more. I'm gonna get Matt in to come and have a look at the numbers and compare them all. Are these blendable? Right, let's look at the last two irons and compare all four. So we've got, unfortunately they're in a bit of a funny order, but the forge at the top here, ball speed 121, spinning, spinning at 4.4, four, carrying 180. And then the tour, so the one that's more blended with the MP range, your ball speed is down five miles an hour compared to the forged. The spin is up and the carry is slightly less at 168. And if we go into the club data here, we're gonna see a big difference on that dynamic loft. So the loft of the club is different, which is causing those spin rates and carry different distances to be different. The forged here, dynamic loft 24, and the tour 27.5, so three degrees different. All swinging at the same speed, so that loft delivery having a big impact on that carry distance. Looking at the numbers, there's gonna be some good options for blending here, I think. Where you start off with your iron set and where you finish up is gonna to be totally up to you and you getting fit. But let's see what Mark thinks about the options of blending. Really solid JPX range there from Mizuno. I think the blend options are definitely there. You would have to be very careful. You might end up having two six irons, which I've done before. Did that when I was with Titleist. I kind of almost do it now with Shrixen, but They've obviously got the launcher, the really chunky one that allows me to pretend I've got a six iron. Um, I think if you went from the tour, you probably wouldn't end up at the hot metal. You would probably blend at the most with the pro, but I think that's why that one's there with the less offset. I think they're just really solid, good looking. And the tour, like the JPX tour 921 there is just, uh, yeah. Very, very good looking. Post comments down below, let me know. Which one would you go for? Would you consider blending? I think a lot, I've just done an in the bag where you can see my bag's really blended. It would be interesting how easy you think it is to get blended or not when it comes to fittings. I'd love to know because it's something that if, you know, if you think about it, Mizuno are producing nearly eight or nine sets of irons without counting them up now. Well, no, it's a lot of sets of irons. Uh, and hopefully they're providing you with enough tools or the fitters with enough tools to allow you to go and really try an eight iron, a seven iron, a five iron, and a four iron, you know, to really see where the blend begins for you. Because to give this many options and then not give you the chance to blend them would be a shame. Post comments down below, and we've got the competition as well. Um, good luck in that. Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon.